Hey, good afternoon. How are you, lovely people? Yay, hey, yay. Hey. All right. My name is uh, Patrick Hill, and I am with uh, Dystopia. Uh, I could ramble down my entire resume, but we only got 45 minutes. So we're going to get started here because they've got me on a timer. All right. So today we're going to talk about developing and creating monetizing content for streaming platforms. We all know that everyone in here is in some sort of audio development creation, primarily podcasts. But as podcasts grow, we're going to um, see how they develop over time within streaming platforms. Um, okay. All right. He didn't update my slides, so I'm going to... There we go. Does everybody know the difference? Oh, by the way, we are giving away a gift bag at the end. If anyone can tell me every single picture on my slides, they have something to do with Philadelphia. You have to name either the person and or the location on every slide. If you get them all right, you can meet me at my booth and you'll get a dystopia package. Okay, great. So just write it down. This is the first slide. If you know what that is, just write it down. All right. So, does anyone know what a stream versus a download versus a play? Ah, you, you probably don't. All right, so let's try, to, let's try to talk about the difference here. You have a stream, that's just a name, it really doesn't do anything. It's just a name that was created out of an industry that people use, I'm streaming, let's stream. A download is actually when the device accesses a file and brings it down to the, the device. So like Apple and Spotify, they actually download it to the device or to their server and then play it from there. So that's the biggest difference. So a lot of times when you look at your metrics and your numbers, you're not actually getting the actual number. That is very important, okay? because Spotify and Apple and some of the bigger other platforms in the streaming space will download your file and keep it on their servers and your hosting company, i.e. Dystopia, Libsyn, or even Simplecast, they really don't know that number. Only Apple does or only Spotify does. So make sure you understand and have an Apple account, a Spotify for podcasters account, and of course your own hosting account whether it's Lipson or Dystopia or whatever you're hosting at, okay? So now that we know those things, you can understand how to monetize in a streaming world because it's really not just the play versus the stream versus the download. You really gotta understand all three of them so that you can go out and raise money because that's what it's all about, correct? Okay. No questions. All right, so we're gonna talk about not only the streaming platforms, but creating those things. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about which things are trending and which things are not trending. We advise you to do all of them, but we're gonna tell you what's coming up in the future for putting your content on streaming platforms and hosting platforms, i.e. Dystopia, YouTube, Spotify, so on and so forth. There are a few things that we want to talk about first that a lot of people don't know that are kind of hidden outside of DAI or merch or those things. And we're going to talk about loss leaders, partnerships. Of course, we're going to talk about the elephant in the room just for a quick second, DAI. Uh, sponsorships, donations, premium content. I think a lot of podcasters are leaving premium content stored on their hard drive and they're not even using that content to even monetize properly. Merchandising, and then the biggest trend in podcasting and audio is what they call Web 3.0, the Lightning Network. Um, I will, especially I'm in a room full of creative people of color. We are missing the boat on the Lightning Network. Raise your hand if you've heard of the Lightning Network for your podcast. You're not a pod, put your hand down, my friend. <laughs> My point exactly, there are lots of podcasters that are starting to add the Lightning Network to their podcast. It's a one-step thing you do, 
and you'll literally get paid every time it gets played. Literally. All right. Remember the pictures now. They all have something to do with Philadelphia. Yes, ma'am. You got to know both the people in the picture. Well, not right now. Write it down, my brother. Then, 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 then come back to me at the end. We got a nice package for you. All right. All right. A loss leader. A loss leader is really key, especially if you have ancillary or adjacent to products with your podcast. Sometimes a lawyer will start a podcast to become a subject matter expert in podcasting just so that lawyer can get more clients. Um, a lot of times the bigger sell is not on the podcast, it's actually the services you do. For instance, my good brother Lloyd here has a lot of services outside of podcasts. His podcast is actually talking about podcasts, but his ancillary services is what he wants to draw in. So he might take a loss on his podcast. Hosting, time, studio, equipment, it's called a loss leader. And a lot of people think that Oh, I'm just marketing, but really what the real business term is called a loss leader. So we're going to loss leader. You want to have some loss leader capabilities in your podcast and in your content when it comes to just streaming. Okay? Partnerships, promotions, and sponsorships. This is a big one, all right? The one key thing that a lot of podcasters or content creators forget is affiliate marketing. This is really big. Uh, one of our podcasters on our network, she, she has a mom podcast. She makes close to $5,000 a month just off affiliate marketing, marketing pampers and mom things. They say, hey, click the link in my bio. It literally takes them to Amazon, somewhere they were going to go anyway and buy mom things. The mothers are great but she gets a percentage off every time someone uses her link to shop on Amazon. So a lot of times she promotes like, hey, I found this cool new learning toy for my son. It does this, 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 and this. You guys should check it out. It's on Amazon. The link to the product is in my bio or in my episode content. Click it. It takes you directly to the item and you can purchase it. It's only $15 your audience will do that click that link and you will get paid from Amazon for you sending that sale to them it sounds cheesy called affiliate marketing but if you're creative with it and it fits into your branding and it fits into your podcast it works it's free you should do it if it works hope someone know that guy's name all right so a lot of people have mentioned IAB um, in a lot of conversations. That's their actual logo, so you can memorize it. So you want to make sure you're a part of that. Um, you don't necessarily have to become a member, but you want to make sure that the, the company you're hosting with is either a member, certified, or verified. So there's three things a hosting company can do. And this is very important. So we actually have a love-hate relationship with IAB because we feel that you guys should actually be getting paid more. It's not that anything, I don't have anything against uh, advertising companies, but let's be honest. It's really hard for small podcasts to get a CPM. And a CPM is what they like to say, cost per thousand. I don't, they say M because it's milli, and that's some Latin French word for thousand, but that's what it stands for. But the average podcaster only gets 100 plays or, and or downloads, and that hundred you worked hard for but you only get paid by the thousand which could be 20 bucks so it could take you 10 months to get $20 I don't know what country or what planet you live on but if I gotta wait 10 months to get $20 I'm not gonna be interested in doing it anymore I don't care what I'm talking about all right so we want to make sure that people understand that joining a network or doing DAI, it's important, but you can't just stop there. You gotta do it all. And the trend for DEI is going down because of what I just said. It's important, but the trend for next year, it, it's going down. Podcasters um, don't 
don't get paid enough. In some places, advertisers are being, are overpaying. There was a horror story in the podcasting news uh, about three weeks ago that where um, a huge mega media company in New York that loves everybody, it starts with an I, um, <laughs> was buying video game ads just to run the numbers up of their podcast plays so they can just turn around and then charge corporations extras of millions of dollars for those plays. So now advertisers don't even like paying 20 bucks per thousand because they don't know whether the thousand was even worth 20. Podcasters don't like getting paid 20 bucks per thousand because they're content creators and they love their content. So DAI trend is down we don't know how far it go down because it's billions of dollars in advertising, but far as into independent personal podcasters, that trend is um, going down. Everyone's not just jumping to do DAI. They, they want to do more curated sponsorships, partnerships, and host red ads. Donations. Don't be afraid to ask for money, okay? It works. Trust me, we know. We actually have a donation button in our application and users will give you money. Audiences will donate money to your content because they want to hear more of you. They want to see more of you. So don't be afraid to ask. Now, if you're opposed to doing that, come up with some creative way and create a partnership with a nonprofit. You know, your biggest supporter literally lives on your block. You won't, you trust me, they are, they're there. But you got to understand that donations do go far, and you should add it to your tool bag of monetization in the new streaming world. This is actually going to go up next year just because of the way economists are predicting the economy to go next year. So creating partnerships with nonprofits next year will be key. Figure out how to find a nonprofit to partner with in your content and raise money with that nonprofit for yourself and them. The economy is trending down for the whole entire year next year, so people will be reluctant to just give money in advertising. They actually want to give it for a purpose. Just think about any downturn in any economy cycle that we had or in your lifetime, it, donations tend to go up. Yeah, yeah, sure. Exactly, that is exactly right. Because when the economy tends to stall or um, the, the donations and giving tend to go up in need. Now, if you're doing um, a nurse podcast, partner with the local blood bank. If you're doing a cooking podcast, partner with Second Food Harvest. That's a Southern, not food bank. I don't know if they have that in Philly or New York, but partner with a food bank. If you have um, any sort of uh, sports podcast, partner with the local rec, partner with the local gym. Say, hey, we're doing a live podcast today and we're going to be doing something really, really funny. We're going to do a sports call at a five-year-old basketball game. You know, that'll be really funny to act like you're actually, you know, Jim Acosta and you're calling play-by-plays for toddlers. So, but that's funny. They want to support the community. Those are ways to get around the give me money, give me money. But it's a way to partner with your community and partner with a nonprofit. Um, I'm, I, I really can't harper enough on how next year nonprofit partnerships are going to be the key to generating revenue until you get over the hump into 2024. Yeah. You want to go now, sir? Yeah. I'll show some. Yes, sir. It is. We're going to get to it. We're going to get to it, my brother. Pass my pen. All right. All right. We're going to get there. I know what. Lightning. Quick. Uh, premium content. So let's talk about premium content. A lot of people don't want to do premium content because they're scared. 
that users won't pay for it. They're like, oh, I can't charge someone $6.99 a month, or I can't charge someone $10 for this one episode. Yes, you can, and it'll work, even if you only sell two. That's $20 more than you had yesterday. You already had the content. The best content for premium content is behind the scenes, bonus content. You already rented the studio for two hours. Your podcast is an hour. Let the podcast run a little long. Chop it up for another 30 to 40 minutes. Bonus episode. You put that bonus episode behind a paywall or even a PayPal link and say, hey guys, we actually took this conversation offline and it gets real gritty. If you wanna hear it, go to this blah, 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 blah link and listen to it. It's a $3.99. Hey, if you wanna learn more about this, then do that. A lot of times podcasters put additional tips. They put uh, more structured content on how to do things. If you're doing more of an educational podcast, it's okay to put additional content behind a paywall. It's all right. They're go they're, they'll respect you for it. And so there's other things you can do too, live shows. You can do um, an ad-free show. Maybe this show it has no ads in it, so you have to pay me $3.99 or so on and so forth. But you have to figure out a way to create premium content at least once a month. Just start doing it at least once a month, putting it behind some sort of paywall and, and seeing what happens. Just remember that it has to have some sort of value to your audience. Okay, merchandising. So if your audience is loyal enough, let's say you have 100 listeners, I guarantee 10 of them We'll buy a t-shirt from you. Just a t-shirt. You don't only want to sell a t-shirt. We've proven this method time in, time out on our app with just playing around or beta testing with current podcasters. You have to have some sort of merch that does not interfere with the bottom line and you have to promote it at the end or the beginning of your content. It is an easy way to generate revenue really quickly. I don't want anyone to go out and buy a thousand t-shirts. You really want to integrate that into your platform. A thousand t-shirts, I don't know if you're going to get the return on investment for a thousand t-shirts. But if you can figure out a way to do on-demand printing, and uh, there's things on Etsy, we've integrated our platform with an on-demand printer. But you also have other on-demand printers that will just take the order as they come, once it's paid for, and then ship it out. I highly suggest using an on-demand printer and not actually using a uh, printer unless it's a live event. Now, now you see how we're putting these things together, huh? So you're at the game for the five-year-olds that you can do the live event and have some merch. I still want to order a thousand t-shirts, maybe like 20 to 30, depending on your audience, but we're talking about in-demand right then and there having that uh, printer, uh, on-demand printer, ship that out for you based on those orders. All right, Lightning Network. All right, the Lightning Network, if anybody knows anything about Bitcoin or the digital wallet, and I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna take some time on this one because this is really important. This trend is going up. There are only 9,700 podcasts that are taking advantage of the Lightning Network. There are over 4 million podcasts on Spotify, Apple, and so on and so forth. Now, let me take a step back of what the Lightning Network is. The Lightning Network is when you take your digital wallet and those who have, have a digital wallet with Coinbase or Albi or any other digital marketplace where you can hold your Bitcoin, your Ethereum, and your Dogecoin, and all those other things, you have a digital wallet. It's a secret key that they'll give you. What the Lightning Network allows you to do is get paid instantly. You can put your digital wallet key directly into your RSS feed. 
Everyone in here knows what an RSS feed is. It's something that holds your title, your description, author, your email. But now they have made room in Podcasting 2.0 where you can insert your digital wallet directly into your RSS feed. And you're going to say, well, Patrick, why is that so important? You just told me to sell merch. No, I told you to do all of them. Okay? <laughs> That's number one. And number two, you want your actual um, digital wallet in your RSS feed because where does your RSS feed go? Everywhere. Everywhere. Well, yep, yep, y'all catching on. Now, if that digital wallet is everywhere, that means everyone and anyone who is listening to your podcast has the ability to pay you. Um, there are about 10 to 15 apps that are already embracing this we're one of them everyone will embrace this at some point it's just a matter of time spotify apple us fountain app we actually are using the lightning network for our musicians as well now why is this big for us does anyone know great i'm going to tell you in the great developing continent of africa transactions and money is really, really hard. There are people of color all on the continent and people of color in South America that where they want to get paid for their content as well, but currencies are different from Kenya to Ghana, the this one, and banks, some banks collapse on the continent, sad but true. So they don't have any faith in the monetary system sometimes. And how does a Kenyan pay a South African for their content? They want to listen to it right then. They want to listen to it right now. And how does that happen? Through the Lightning Network. Every time that content is played, you get paid. Literally, phew, lightning. Just like my man back there said. Really quick to your direct wallet. You don't have to wait. You don't have to wait for any acceptance or anything. It literally goes directly to your wallet in your choice of digital currency. And from there, you can take it to wherever you want it to go. This is how um, paper play will happen in the future. This is how DAI will work in the future. That whole dynamic ad insertion. That's how this is going. This is how the, you can really get paid per play and not CPM. I don't want to wait for a thousand. Just give me my one penny now. Whatever you're going to give me, give it to me now. Don't wait for me to get a 1000 I might not get a 1000 I want it now. And the Lightning Network helps improve that. Um, there are a lot of hosting companies that allow the Lightning Network. Um, of course, Dystopia has the Lightning Network. There are a few other ones, Castro's. If, I don't know. Uh, he would be the best person to find that out. Um, but um, there are other hosting platforms that allow this. I, I would say by the end of 2023, all hosting platforms will have some sort of capability on the Lightning Network, but definitely in 2024, every single platform and every single podcast mobile player will accept Lightning Network as regulations come down literally after this midterm, so go vote. They are going to regulate cryptocurrency after this election. Once it is regulated, it will go like lightning. Seriously, everybody in the world is going to start using digital currencies. Yes, yeah, we have. A, I'm gonna go back to my gentleman in the back. He 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 been waiting, and I'm gonna come right to you. I can. That is a great question, young man. Let me go ahead and explain what exactly what he's talking about. With the Lightning Network, you can actually get paid going twice. So there are actually apps. Which one is actually paying people to listen? Fountain. The Fountain app literally pays your audience to listen to you. And Fountain kind of splits that with the podcast. Say, hey, thank you for bringing your audience to us. 
we paid the um, audience to listen to you. Here's a little cut of that. And the reason why that is important, at Dystopia, we truly believe that audio communication is the future of monetization of communication. We started out with stone tablets. That worked well for Moses. That's not going to work well for my kids. All right? We started out with there. We moved to feathers and pens. We moved to typewriters and then to email. The key thing about communication is they want it to be fast and engaged or digestible. I know some people love the books. They love to feel the paper. But that's a hobby and a pastime. If I need to get you a message or some information very quickly, the best way to, to digest that information is through audio. So everything is going to convert over to audio, whether it's for entertainment purposes or it's the safety training that you have to take at your job or the DEI training that you have to take at your job or the sexual harassment training that you have to give students to keep their hands to themselves. And that is how the buy transactional will happen. Instead of being um, told to take this training, you could be paid to take this training. Well, who took their certifications? Oh, I did. How do I know? I can tell because you listened to this podcast on how to be trained, and now because you listen to it, I can pay you because you listen to it. Thank you. Does that answer your question? Yeah. There you go. All right. <laughs> Miss, Miss Walker. That's the great thing about the Lightning Network. It could be whatever you decide you want to get paid on. Um, the Fountain app pays listeners to listen to certain podcasts. And the more they listen to it, the more they pay their listeners. So you put your wallet in the app when you sign up. You'll put in your wallet or connect it with Coinbase. And whenever you listen, those, those proceeds go directly to your Coinbase wallet or vice versa. So for instance, um, Dystopia is releasing the Lightning Network, but we're doing it in a way to help creators get paid. So we want to pay people per play. A couple months ago, we released that we're going to pay podcasters five cent per play for exclusivity. There was a lot of excitement, but a lot of questions and concerns of why only exclusive podcasts? Why not everywhere? Why not all my podcasts? So we actually had to take a step back and, to, and we took a long look at the Lightning Network, and we want to pay creators for their work. And so the Lightning Network allows us to do that. Granted, it is a digital currency of your choice, so there is a little bit of hesitancy there, or a little bit of knowledge there. But I do not personally. This is a this is a Patrick Hill statement, not sponsored by Afros and Audio or Dystopia. Personally, I would like to see people of color not miss this train when it comes to creativity. In every moment of history, we have created something and was not properly either paid for our work, whether it was the White House or hip hop. So I would like for us to get ahead of this before we get behind it and we're playing catch up. Did that make sense, Ms. Walker? The listener can pay you as well. The listener can pay you. Your sponsors can pay you. And instead of a sponsor coming in and say, you know what, we're going to give you $5,000 for your plays. And you're like, ah, but I'm getting a million plays. I guess I got to take it. You can say, nope, I want one, I want a Dodge coin for every time my, my podcast gets played. And you'd be like, okay. And that lightning work literally will pay you the second they stop listening. Like literally the second that they close that app out and stop listening, you get your payment directly to your wallet. You don't have to wait on sponsorship checks. You don't have to wait on advertising checks. It literally pays you the second that the listener stops listening. And the reverse transaction is if you're a listener, you immediately get paid once you stop listening. Yes, sir.
Lost leader. Lost leader. So is that kind of like the same here? Or if I'm the assistant, are you willing to pay me to be a constant to attract me something else? That is a great combination of monetization tools. Thank you, sir. You can literally pay an audience to listen to you so you can sell them something else. I know if everyone's got caught in the mall, hey, would you like a free trip to Orlando? And then when you get to Orlando, they try to sell you a house? <laughs> That's a loss leader right there. They gave you something to get you in. They might not get everybody, but they're selling houses. They only, have, they only need two. Right. <laughs> right. Right. You know, Amazon distant person. Or right. Amazon parent. Right. Right. I'm going to give you 15 text to consume it, but Amazon's paying me a dollar for every package they sell to a parent. Exactly. That's a way to do the backwards affiliate partnerships and the loss leader and do the um, Lightning Network. So that is, you guys are creatives. You just have to get creative on the business side as well because this is the Wild Wild West right now. And so we got to put two and two together. All right, I'm Patrick. Oh, oh. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Um, I think as a podcaster, you have, depending on your content, do you care? If your podcast is only to sell Pampers, you probably don't care. But if, you're, if your podcast is about social justice, then, you know, you might care if you're just getting, you know, what the engagement looks like from your audience. So, you know, it really depends on your audience and your content. You know, some of the best movies have never been seen. And that's because they refuse to play that Hollywood game of marketing and stuff like that. So you just think about it like that. I would think about it like that. And that's why I always tell most important content creators to have two or three podcasts. You got to have one that you really love, that you care about. That's the, that's the message, your vision, and or your creativity. Then you also have to have one almost to kind of like say, hey, this, this is how you do podcasts. Because there are going to be more listeners trying to do something you know the old saying is there's more there's more students practicing law than actually <laughs> actually <laughs> serving law that's because there's more people that actually want to be a podcaster than actually being podcast so you might want to have two so one supplements the other one supplements your passion have a way uh i think it was in one more question over there Yes. Oh, no, no. Okay. Okay. So um, we are grinding up to the end. Oh yeah, we're, we're we got about five minutes for questions. I'm Patrick Hill. Devonte Pickering is here. He's the head of my uh, technology team. He will answer any questions about the Learn Lightning Networks and DAI or anything that we have to offer. Um, we were. Um, we were strategic into coming to Afros and Audios, just like we're very strategic in supporting our own, first and foremost. Don't get me wrong, you will see me at the big ones, but I also have to make the small ones as well. Um, so, yep, any questions for me, uh, Dystopia, or anything? Yes, sir. So, like, uh, right now I'm working with an agency out in Denver. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, if, if, I want, if I wanted to work with you guys, how does that work if I already basically have a distributor? Well, if you already have a distributor, congratulations. <laughs> uh, yeah, so work with that distributor. I would just check on my contract and make sure it's not like a uh, full-blown contract. It might be time-based. It might be just for one RSS feed. It might be for your whole entire creative collection. By the way, if you're in that contract, try to get out. Don't ever give up all your IP to one person. Don't ever do that. Okay, yeah, so good. So so if you do want to work with us, just check me out at the booth and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll handle it from there. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, 
Oh, man, man. well, man, that, that's a that's a great question. Um, Dystopia, the company, we have a few business models. Our main business model is B two B. We're at, at in our hearts, we're developers, and we like to build things. So we actually sell our technology to other bigger companies that don't may not have our features. Um, Simple cast is sitting there. I'm looking for them, but you know, but that's what we do. We also sell institutional packages to schools. We just gave, we just committed. We haven't handed them out yet. We just committed um, 64 mobile podcast kits to all the high schools and middle schools in Charlotte. Um, so we really, <laughs> thank you. So we really are trying to, you know not only help the current generation, but the next generation learn about communication and journalism, but our big bulk of our business is B2B. We did start out in B2C, in music and artists, and then we converted over to podcasts, supplementally to both of them, but that's where, that's where our business model lies. So we, we tr we're the independent podcaster or the individual podcaster, we just wanna support. All right, so if everyone has their uh, sheet written down, you can see me in the back. Hopefully, I'll go through this really quickly. Every single one of these slides has something from Philadelphia. If you can tell me every single one of them, you can win a prize. So some of them are skylines, some of them are people. That's a hard one. Uh, you're not supposed to say it out loud. You're not supposed to say it out loud. <laughs> 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 so, and some of these are really easy. Yeah. Some of these are really easy. I'm not from Philly, but if you could tell me all those things, we got a prize for you. Yes, ma'am. So if it was someone that's going to get all of them, are you going with the highest number? I am. I am. I'm going with the highest number. But if you're from Philadelphia, you should know all of those, right? Right? Not really? Okay. Oh, okay. But you knew that picture, huh? There you go. <laughs> all right. All right, any more questions? All right, thank you, and uh, I appreciate you guys having me today. <laughs>